How's it going? Welcome back to SMG Hidden Gems. Today we are featuring my vintage Sun Beta Lead 100 watt solid state amp. Now, you guys really dug the last hidden gem video I did, and that was on the Ibanez Tone Blaster 100. It definitely had a unique sound. And well, this thing here, it definitely got unique in spades. This guitar amp, it got to be really popular with the whole Seattle scene in the early 90s. Kurt Cobain had one of these uh, during the Bleach years. The Melvins were really fond of this. I really dug the track Honey Bucket that had the beta lead all over it. But I got turned on to this amp by the guys in Red Fang and the song Prehistoric Dog. If you check the video, they had the beta leads all over the place. That was back in 2008 and I went searching for one and I found one on the Detroit Craigslist. I got this for about 400 bucks and I really wanted to do an inexpensive hidden gem amp type video. And I checked out some of the prices and I saw a couple of these were going for about 500 US and thought, okay, great. Then we got discussing it on the SMG Discord and a couple of fans were like, oh yeah, somebody's got one going for 1500 bucks in Canada. I'm like, what the fuck? $1,500 for one, one of these? Are you out of your fucking minds? What the hell? 1500 Canadian probably translates into about 1200 American and that is way, way, way too much money to be paying for one of these. You shouldn't be paying more than 600 bucks for one of these on the used market. Anybody wants you to pay more than that, tell them to go fuck themselves. Believe me, there's far cooler amps you can get for that kind of money. Now I got a lot of tube amps here and you can swap tube amps out, especially high gain tube amps, and they're all kind of variations on a theme. They all sound kind of in the same family. This is something very different. This is ugly, this is sludgy. And there's a reason why it's super popular with the whole stoner rock and grunge crowd and the whole doom crowd. This, this thing's just got it. So let's check out what this thing can do. I've got the controls zeroed. Uh, I've got the level, let's bring the level up a little bit. We'll bring the drive back and just see what we can do. I mean, obviously nobody should be buying a beta lead for its clean channel. If that's what you're looking for, go find another ramp, seriously. See what we can get. Kind of gritty, kind of fun. The really interesting stuff starts happening when you start bringing the drive up past the 12 o'clock position and you start bringing this up more and more and it gets it fun. Personally, I like it maxed out. I think it just sounds awesome this way. EQ's definitely a little bit different than what you'd find on most tube amps. It's a little bit stronger and a little bit nastier, but still, if you watch Scott Elliott's Guitar Tone Mastery, uh, you use his techniques and go backwards here, go from treble to mid to bass and dial the tone in. And that treble control really gets nasty in a hurry. Uh, again, just use the EQ really sparingly on this amp. You don't need a lot. Okay, that's just super fun. This is sludgy as hell. Now, I did drop an overdrive into the chain here just to try it out to see what it's like. Honestly, I don't think I really dig it with an overdrive. Like if I pull the gain back a little bit and then boost it like you would a tube amp, it kind of just loses its luster. <laughs> It's, it, it makes it sound a little bit thinner. Maybe we can dial that in just a little bit more. Let's try that. Okay, okay, I take it back. It sounds a little bit better scooped up that way, just a tiny bit. But I don't think this is really what you would call a gent amp. This is all about glissando, I think. 
Now the overdrive has definitely tightened things up a bit, but I'm not still not sure if this is something I would go for on say like an album tone or something like that. It might be a little bit too tight for this style. <laughs> Not bad, not bad, but honestly, I, I like the non-tight sound. I like the sludginess of this thing. I like the fact that it is out of control, especially when you crank the gain knob up all the way. Tell you what, let's try it out in a full mix and see what we get. So we're back. That actually worked out great in the full mix. I did that with four tracks, two a little bit darker, two a little bit brighter, just to see how they would blend. And yeah, it sounds freaking gigantic. It's definitely not a modern sound, that's for sure. Now, one of the other hidden powers of this amp is you can change channels with this with a foot switch. Unfortunately, it needs a special five pin switch and I've got no idea on how to dig one of those up. So if you wanna change channels on this thing, you basically have to plug in top or bottom and you've got completely independent EQ sections so you can set them up but this has also got this cool both inputs mode we can dial these channels in independently and this is something I really haven't seen like on a tube app it's like I just take the one a little bit bring it up and then we can take a more mid-rangey sound on the second channel. Two. And then we can blend the two channels together. We can see what we get. That's kind of fun. Honestly, though, I think I do prefer the single channel version. It seems to be, honestly, a little bit more controllable that way. Now, doing some careful homework on the internet, uh, there are some alternatives to this thing. It looks like there is a clone out there. Maybe that might be worth taking a look at. There's also a pedal version from Berserker Electronics, which is going for a couple hundred bucks. Now, if you grab that pedal and put it into one of these things, like a Seymour Duncan Power Stage, you'd probably get very close to the exact same effect, and it'd probably be far more economical, and then this is gonna be way more versatile than just one of these. And you're not going to get charged highway robbery prices like some of those listings on reverb there are alternatives so don't pay through the nose for one of these they kind of only make one sound it's a great sound but it does seem like there are some great alternatives to paying through the nose for one of these things i bought mine back in 2008 and i was lucky to get it for that price i'm glad i got it it was kind of shocking to see it going for that much these days and again i think it's just way too much money for that sort of thing but it's a seriously cool amp i've got it i'm not planning on getting rid of it anytime soon Tell you what though, I might grab one of those pedals at some point and put it up against the real thing and just shoot out and see what it's like. Anyway, that's it for this episode of SMG Hidden Gems. You guys got a cool amp that you think not enough people know about? Hey, leave a comment below because I love hearing from you. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Until then, I'm freaking out of here.